I have a father Almighty Father He is King of kings And Lord of lords I have a father Hallelujah I have a King of kings and Lord of lords, higher than the highest, greater than the greatest, stronger than the strongest, older than the oldest, wiser than the wisest, richer than the richest. Glory be to your holy name, Lord. Please accept our worship in Jesus' name. Thank you for everything you've done thus far. Thank you because we're about to seal it up this evening. Oh Lord, accept our worship in Jesus' name. Tonight, in your own characteristic way, give us your best. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. 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 Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. And then shake hands with one or two people, prophesy to them and tell them, I'm getting the best tonight. And then you may please be seated. Praise God. At 5 p.m. this evening, the number of babies born during this special Holy Ghost service rose to 18. Twelve boys and six girls. Let the boy shout, praise the Lord. And let the girl shout, hallelujah. <laughs> Glory be to God. Tomorrow, by the grace of God, at 8 a.m., for those of us who are still behind, there will be a Thanksgiving service here with me and my family coming to say thank you, Lord. As for those of us who, of course, who want to be in, in our churches tomorrow morning, tomorrow is a special day for Thanksgiving anyway, so you go and the Almighty God will prosper you mightily in Jesus' name. I don't know if you have noticed that uh, since the beginning of this special Holy Ghost service, we've not had a single problem with the audio. So let's give the audio engineers a very big, big round of applause. Keep doing a good work. God bless you. John chapter 10, verse 10. John 10, 
verse 10. Jesus Christ said, the ego said, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. There's something very peculiar about the ego. And that is, it doesn't eat leftovers. It doesn't eat dead meat. Each time it wants to eat, it hunts. Looks for fresh food each time. One of my sons was speaking on Thursday, and he told us that the ego sleeps for more than 10 hours a day. And from that he concluded that, uh, well, even the ego can see sleep or feel tired. Well, that may be true. But the important point is that the ego does nothing without a purpose. He's either taking care of the young ones, if there's anyone around, or he goes for hunting when there is need for food. When there's nothing else to do, <laughs> he, he sleeps. The ego is not like the vulture. The vulture will eat any food, any leftover, any rotten meat. Not the ego. Whenever the ego wants to eat, it looks for something that is alive. The ego goes for it, then he has food. The Lord Jesus Christ tells us in John chapter 6, verse 47, John 6, 47, that he is the bread of life, the living bread. That if you eat this bread of life, this living bread, which you can also find in John 6, verse 15, John 6, 51, rather, John 6, verse 51, he so said, you will live. You live forever. When we come to the table of the Lord, we need to appreciate that the bread is symbolic of flesh turned from someone who was still alive. The Bible says, by his stripes, you were healed. The stripes that broke bits out of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ were laid on him while he was still alive. I've said it before. Have you ever wondered why they had to beat him when they knew they were going to kill him? If you're going to crucify somebody, there's no need for stripes. But the stripes were meant to provide you with living bread. Something that is made alive and made available to you alive. The wine that we drink when we come to the Holy Communion symbolizes his blood. Blood only flows from a living body. You can't get blood flowing through a corpse. And according to Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11, Leviticus 17, verse 11, the Bible may declare that 
the blood of the animal is the life the very life of the animal that's why if anybody should have a, an accident and it's bleeding and they get him to the hospital the first thing they want to check is how much blood has he lost is there enough blood left in him to sustain life if they feel that the blood left in him is not enough quickly they do blood transfusion because the moment the blood is gone life is over and the, the, the bible says in romans chapter 8 from verse 10 to 11 romans 8 from verse 10 to 11 that this blood that is symbolic of the Holy Spirit. If, if, if it's in you, it will quicken your mortal bodies. It brings your, even your body that is dying back to life. You had the testimony of a great chief in one part of the country who had a, a problem and he became paralyzed from his waist downwards and they took him to the best hospital in London because he was wealthy and he was there for months and then one day the chief surgeon there came to him he took a very long sharp pain and said chief watch me and he drove the pain through the tie of the chief and asked him can you feel anything the chief said no mm. so the surgeon said sir this part of your body is dead, dead forever. That's so anything anybody can do for you. Go home. And they brought him back home. Ondo is the town, so you know this not uh, a fairy story. There was a little girl in the house who said to the chief. I know a man of God. If he prays for you, your legs will come alive. So they brought the chief to the camp. He was a big man, hefty. If I remember correctly, about either four or so men carried him from the car into my living room. And we shared with him this very passage if the spirit of him that raised Jesus Christ from the dead dwells in you that spirit will quicken your mortal body bring your dead body back to life and of course <laughs> in a situation like that you don't have to preach long the chief gave his life to Jesus we prayed a simple prayer they carried him in. He walked back to his car. Now you see, there's a difference between just being alive and living vigorously. When you are carried on eagle's wings, you live vibrantly like the eagle. In Deuteronomy 34, verse 7, Deuteronomy 34, verse 7, the Bible says, even at the age of 120, Moses was still living vibrantly 
His eyes didn't grow dim. All his vital organs were still working perfectly at 120. Tonight, Jesus Christ said, I have come for you. That you might have life. And how are you to have it? More abundantly. The purpose of the Holy Communion service of tonight is that for the rest of your life, you will be living vibrantly. Like someone who is swearing on eagle's wings. That's why I've always hammered it again and again. The Holy Communion is not an ordinary meal. You have had stories upon stories of people who took the Holy Communion and miracles happened. One that I remember not too long ago was the case of a, a pastor who had that one of the members was about to die, an aged man, old man. The old man sent for him and said, please come and give me Holy Communion for the last time. So the pastor gave him Holy Communion and then the pastor was about to travel. Pastor came back, I think about a week or so later, expecting to hear that the, the chief had passed on. What did he hear? Even before he left the house, as he, before he traveled, the last meal that the man asked for had become a first meal. Because he was healed, he came up back alive, and for the rest of his life he lived vibrantly. You're going to become a mighty high flyer because you're going to partake of the living bread. You're going to partake of the living blood. The spirit of the almighty God is going to flow through your system. So you become, even no matter how old you are, you become stronger by the day. But if you take the Holy Communion on what they lay, it has so much power, it can kill. As in the text, the Bible passage that was read to us, you read it on what they lay, so you either become sick or you die. That's why for the last time, we are making an altar call. If you know you are living in sin, don't take the Holy Communion. But if you are willing to say bye-bye to a life of sin, come now to the altar. Let's pray for your salvation. And then, the living bread can become a miracle for you and not a poison so i'm going to count from one to seven if you know you want to surrender your life to jesus come now before i count up to seven and i'm counting one Two. Three. Four.
five. Those of you who are clapping, your hands will always blossom. Six. Thank you. Now those of you already in front and those of you on the way, cry to the Lord. Ask him to please save your soul. Ask him to please forgive your sins. Ask him to wash you clean with his blood. Tell him you want him to be your savior and your Lord. Tell him you will serve him from now on. You will do his will. You are saying bye-bye to a life of sin. Ask him to please receive you. And the rest of us, let's stretch our hands towards our new brothers and sisters and intercede for them. That the one who saved our own souls, we save their souls also. Pray for them, brethren. Intercede for them for just about two minutes. And those of you on the way, hurry up now. Because I'm about to pray for salvation. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Savior, I want to thank you for your word. I want to give you all glory and honor for all those who have responded to the altar call. Father, please receive them. Have mercy on them. Save their souls. Let your blood wash away their sins. Receive them into the family of God. Please write their names in the book of life. And from now on, when they call on you, answer them by fire. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise God. Now I want to rejoice with those of you who have come forward for salvation. I need your names, address, and prayer requests. And I promise you from now on, I'll be praying for you. God bless you. Uh, we'll give you a few minutes as the counselors attend to you so that they finish with you before we proceed. God bless you. Over to you, choir. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are your garments are the spotless, are they white? As snow are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul, cleansing Lord of the land? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Lord of the land, have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the land? Are your garments of the spotless? Are you 
How you worship the Lord in the soul, the soul, the soul. I adore That I stay with sin and the wars in the floor of the land. Oh, oh, oh. there is a blessing, blessing, blessing flowing for your sins. Oh, be wars in the blood.
thank you. Now, when you eat the bread tonight, your prayer will be bread of heaven. Feed me till I want no more. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. The Lord Jesus, the very night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Go ahead and eat and cry to Him, Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. At the well, I was seeking for things that could not have a fire. But then I heard my Savior speaking to me. Is it drawn from the well? That shall never, never run dry Fill my cup, Lord, may you I live more I live till I'm love Come and pray Come and pray It's resting on my soul
man at the well I was seeking for things I could not satisfy, but then I had my Savior calling, drop from the well that never shall run dry. My cup, I lift it up. Come and quench the thirsty of my soul. Oh, bread of heaven, feed me, feed me up. Oh, fill my cup. There are millions in this world who are craving for any treasures that cannot be. But none can match this wondrous treasure that I find. In Jesus Christ, my Lord, fill my cup now and lift it up tonight. Come and quench the thirsty of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me. If you have not been served the bread, here you just shout hallelujah. In the old auditorium, you wave your hand so I can see that you have not yet been served the bread. If you have not been served the bread, will you please shout hallelujah? If you have not been served the wine, Please shout hallelujah. Ah, some people to my extreme left here. In the old auditorium, if you have not been served wine, wave your hand so, so I can see. Okay, we'll take just one more verse as we wait for the people here to be served wine. The blood that Jesus shed for me Way back on Calvary The blood that gives me strength From day to day It will never It suits my doubt and it comes my feet and it dries all my tears of blood that gives me strength from day to day it will never I 
Pastors, you've done very well. Shall we all stand, please? When you drink the wine, you will cry to him. He said, The spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Tonight, quicken my mortal bodies. From now, let me begin to really live, to enjoy life, and enjoy it abundantly. The spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, quicken my mortal bodies. From now, let me begin to live vibrantly, and begin to enjoy life, abundant life. After the same manner, also he took the cup when he had stopped, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do ye as soft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. In the name of the Father. <clears throat> And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Daddy. Holy Spirit. Eternal Spirit of God. You that raised Jesus from the dead. Quicken my mortal bodies. I'm going to begin to live vibrantly. No ache, no pain, no sickness, no disease, no weakness. Let me begin to live life more abundantly, vibrantly, abundantly healthy, strong, powerful, living for you, Lord.
never tired, never fainting, never weary. Strong, vibrant living with the glory of your Holy Name, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Quick in my mortal bodies, Spirit of the Living God, and they have life, they have it more abundant. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Almighty. Thank you, Daddy. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Let's remain in an attitude of worship as we sit down, pass the cups to the eyes. As we proceed now to the anointing service, we may want to ask why the anointing service on a theme on eagle's wings? I think one of my children who preached on Thursday hinted at the fact that you cannot ride on the eagle's wings without a, at least a little bit of the anointing of the eagle rubbing off on you. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, Verse 13, Acts 4, 13, and the story started from Acts 3, verse 1. After Peter and John saw a lame man, was born lame, was asking for arms, and they told him, hey, we don't have money, but we have something better than money to give you. Told him to rise up and walk. And began to walk, to leap, and to praise God. Everything led to an uproar. Then the big people came and were asking questions. And they said something in verse 13 of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4. The Bible said, they saw that these were ordinary men. They were not even educated. Then the Bible said they took note that they had been with Jesus. Something Christ like. The kind of power that Jesus exhibited had rubbed off on them. You can ride on the eagle's wings 
without a little bit of the anointing of the ego rubbing off on you. The anointing you are about to receive tonight is actually not for you. It's to show the world that you have been with the ego. The anointing tonight is for you to go out there and begin to heal the sick. And to begin to set captives free. And to begin to raise the dead. So that people will say, what's happening? We know this fellow. He's an ordinary person like us. And they begin to ask, where have you been? You tell them, <laughs> I'm different now. I'm riding on the eagle's wings. I travel to an African nation. When was time for me to leave? And the driver was taking me to the airport. I just noticed that the ladies, my children, who have been taking care of me, I thought they would want to see me to the airport. They didn't. They didn't. They just stood by the door, waving bye-bye to me. And then I said to the, as soon as they waved bye-bye, and the driver began to move. I looked back, and all these girls rushed into the room. They just, you could see that they, they, they were in a hurry. So I asked the driver, what's going on? Oh, <laughs> is that they are running to go and sleep on your bed? They want to be the, the first people to partake of the anointing that we have left behind on the bed. So I said to him, in that case, what about you? Oh, he said, I'm wiser than they. I said, how? He said, I took your towel. <laughs> and he said, no doubt there is anointing on the bed sheet, but the tower touched every part of your body. As you get anointed tonight, the anointing of the ego himself will rub off on you. So you can begin to worship God until they come to anoint you. But after they have anointed you, you will cry to the Almighty God. And so from now on, with this anointing, let me begin to do exploits for you.
anointing fall on me.
upon the church in Anabasha. It makes us so. run forward very quickly go to the nearest post and get anointed I want you to lift your voices to the almighty God and say Father with this anointing I may become a miracle worker for you go ahead talk to the Lord with this anointing, Almighty God. Let him become a miracle worker for you. And let people see me and know I have been with Jesus. Uh, I'm in constant contact with the ego. Let me become a miracle worker for you, Lord. Let me become a miracle worker for you. Let me become a miracle worker for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Let me become a mighty vessel unto honor your hand. Let me become a miracle worker for you. Like never before, with this anointing, let people know I've been in contact with the Almighty God Himself. But now I'm riding on eagle's wings. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Now, before the final blessings for tonight, um, I think it is only proper that we say thank you to the Almighty God for all he had done for us since the beginning of the special Holy Ghost services. So if you kindly take your thanksgiving offering 
and we dance victoriously to the nearest basket, we drop the offering then, and we'll come and say the closing prayer, and we'll be on our way. Over to you, band.
us above every other name. I decree from now on go forth and destroy yokes. From now on when you touch the sick, the sick shall be healed. Yeah. When you command demons, demons will obey. Yeah. Wherever you see poverty and you make a decree, there will be financial breakthroughs. When you see barrenness and you make a decree, the barren will become fruitful. Yeah. Go forth and raise the dead. Yeah. Go forth and ride in the high places. <laughs> And because you have given to God, go forth and prosper. Yeah. It shall be well with you. Yeah. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Yeah. Do I hear somebody shout hallelujah? Yeah. 